When you publish a research paper, it is a big accomplishment. Not only do you get your name on a paper, but it changes who you are as a person. After going through the whole process, you would have gained many, many skills that are beneficial to advancing your career. Hi, this is Dr. Jia. Today, I'm going to break down the six transferable skills you gain when you publish research papers. Why do I call these skills transferable? It's because these skills can be used in different aspects of your medical career or even in different industries. Having transferable skills are crucial because they increase your value in the workplace and decrease your competition through your unique mix of skills and experience. And what's more, you have the publication to prove it. Skill number one, problem solving. Conducting research is fundamentally solving a problem, but if you trace it back even further, you have to learn how to identify the problem by combing through the literature systematically, find a gap, and designing a study to solve the problem. It shows that you will use critical thinking and you are innovative. In any industry, these are highly valuable skills in a leadership position. Skill number two, written communication skills. I'm not just talking about grammar here. When you write a research paper, you are pitching and selling your research story. I'm talking about being persuasive, crafting clear messages about your research, and coming up with evidence to support your arguments. What else do you do in your paper? You communicate through figures. When you create figures or tables to clarify concepts in your research paper, you have to process all of the information to make it as simple as possible. It proves that you have the skill to synthesize complex information into simple messages. If you study how successful people operate, there is one thing they do really well. They know how to transform a complex idea into a simple one. Skill number three, data analytics and data interpretation. So what is in abundance in this world right now? Data. But what the marketplace lack is the skill to make sense of the data. Knowing statistics and data analytics is a highly specialized skill. So if you can run the analysis and interpret the data, you will be seen as highly valuable. Skill number four, interpersonal skills. Research is a team sport and not a solo endeavor. So knowing how to collaborate and work with others is really important because that demonstrates leadership and teamwork. When you are the principal investigator, you need to learn how to come up with a vision bring a team together, lead the team, and finally carry the team to the finish line, that is paper publication. I know conducting a research project is an overwhelming process, so I made the idea to pave a blueprint for you. This blueprint takes you through a seven-step process from idea generation to paper submission. So be sure to get a copy by clicking the link below. Skill number five, project management. Research projects are typically long with many, many different phases. That means you have to learn to break the project down and set different milestones. Planning projects take time. That is why when academics are serious about research, they need protected time to do thinking and project management. And it's no longer just about data collection anymore. The bigger the project, the more time it needs. If you are good at project management, you can take on bigger projects and even lead new initiatives in a leadership position. Skill number six, intrapersonal skills. This is not to be confused with interpersonal skills. Intrapersonal skill is what you gain from the inside. We are talking about confidence, self-esteem, self-motivation, drive. Remember, confidence comes from competence. When you prove to yourself that you can handle a big project or manage a team all the way through the end, it is a big confidence booster. Another thing you gain is resilience. When you're able to navigate through the publication system and handle paper rejections like a champ, you are developing your resilience muscle. Now, how do you use this information to advance your career? First, identify and assess how strong and weak you are in these skills. Having awareness is crucial because now you have, you have now opened your mind about your skills and how valuable you are. That way, if you see a new leadership opportunity, you will not shut down and say, I can't take this position because all I've ever done is research. Instead, you say this confidently. I'm highly suitable for this position because I have these six skills when I did research. Another thing is, Identifying these skills will help you craft a compelling cover letter or promotional package when you are up for pro promotion. Instead of merely listing out a few strengths, you can show your transferable skills through your research work. For example, don't say, I have leadership skills. Instead, 
say I led the team through a two-year project resulting in five publications and XYZ. You see the difference there? So now go write that paper and gain some cool transferable skills. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and share it with somebody. I'll see you in the next video.